Good morning, or good afternoon, or good day. I'm Robert Largent. I'm the environmental engineer for APHIS, or the Exchange. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about how we monitor our piping. So when we talk about line leak detection, we are using the term to refer to anything looking for leaks on our piping or our lines. In the industry, pipe and line are terms that are used interchangeably. Uh, you can hear one guy refer to them as the lines, another one will refer to them as pipes. It's all the same thing. It's just interchangeable. Um, the line leak detections, they're engineered to detect a leak from any portion of the piping underground. And we do this because more than half of the leaks that occur in our UST systems occur in the pipes. So this is especially dangerous whenever you have a pressurized system. A pressurized system means that the, the lines are under pressure the whole time they're in operation. This is what it looks like above ground when you're looking at a pressurized system. You're usually looking down these sumps to look at one end of the piping. Uh, as you can see in this picture here, these are the pipes. And this is the pump that pushes fuel through this pipe to the dispensers over here. So that piping is under pressure the whole time. So if there's a leak in there, this is pushing fuel into the ground the whole time that leak is there. So it can be really dangerous if these pipes develop leaks. Since 2016, the EPA has required all piping to have two forms of release detection. The first is considered catastrophic line leak detection. That's usually accomplished through an automatic line leak detector. And they define this as a device that can detect a leak of three gallons per hour when the line is pressurized to 10 PSI. And we do this most of the time because line leak detectors will check the lines every time somebody starts, a, a customer starts a transaction at the dispensers. The second method that we use to do piping release detection is secondary containment with continuous interstitial monitoring. Basically, all the piping is double walled and they put a sensor at each end of that piping to monitor for any releases or liquids. And here's what we're talking about when we talk about the sumps, the dispenser sump on the right and the sub turbine pump sump or tank sump on the left. Um, what we're monitoring is this area between the STP pump and the dispensers. We want to watch that at all times to make sure there's no releases. And we do that by the methods that we talked about earlier. So we're just monitoring this piece of equipment right here. Because it's out in the environment, if a leak develops in this piping, it can get into the soil and then it can move underground and contaminate drinking water or surface water if you're close enough to a surface water body. And the first method we use is automatic line leak detectors. Those are on top of your sub turbine pump inside the tank sump right here. And those monitor the piping. Every time a customer starts a transaction, they do a three gallon per hour test to make sure this piping is not leaking. It's required in all pressurized piping, has to be able to detect a three gallon per hour, and it must be tested annually. So there's two kinds of automatic line leak detectors. Both of them do the three gallon per hour check during every transaction. Your mechanical line leak detectors, the way they react if there is a, a leak in the system is they just slow the flow down. So that relies on your customers coming in and complaining that the, the pumps are running slow, that the fuel to their car is running slow. Your electronic line leak detectors, those enable those are capable of turning off any of the remote pumping system. They can also do piping tightness tests. They can do a 0.2 gallon per hour monthly test or a 0.1 gallon per hour annual test. They report all these tests to the Vita route and you can see them in Insight 360. And they activate alarms on the Vita route. And they're also capable of turning off anything if they detect liquids in them. So they're the more proactive type of leak detector. So mechanical line leak detectors are these on the left, and you'll see they have that hex-shaped nut on the top of them. That's to help the contractor get them in and out because they're, they rust in place quite often. And then on the right, you, these usually have a black cable running into them, and that's your power source. 
for your electronic line leak detectors. The left, they usually have a brass pipe that go into them so that they can use that to vent. And there's two different kinds, four different kinds of fuel. Your gasoline ones are usually just black. And if you have diesel at your site, they're usually green on top. And that's just because they make different kinds of mechanical line leak detectors for different fuel types. These brass piping right here is a siphon piping going from them and it helps them work properly. And it helps you know that's a mechanical line leak detector. So when a mechanical line leak detector goes into effect or activates, it basically slows down your flow. And what happens is that the, the pump will stop flowing normally. The customers will come in and complaining. But there are other things that can cause slow flow. And this is just a side note. Um, if you have slow flow at your dispensers, it can be your line leak detector. It could be a nozzle. It could be a fuel filter is clogged. Um, it could also be your delivery driver may have dropped a rag down there. You may have a rag in your um, sub turbo pump. If you have that, it'll slow down your flow of fuel too. The electronic line leak detectors, they're also designed to detect three gallon per hour releases every time uh, they activate the dispenser. They can also detect small leaks. They're third party evaluated. They're required to have annual tests, just like the mechanical. Um, but these can activate alarms and they can shut down your site. So they're a lot more proactive and we require these on our unattended sites because they will keep you safer than the uh, mechanical line leak detectors do. And this is just an example of what a 0.1 gallon power leak looks like. It's about the size of a Coke can every hour. And so it's not a huge release, but over time, I've worked at sites where they've had several thousand gallons worth of fuel drop into the ground because they had a small leak like this and it was able to access the environment. When we talk about our double wall piping and our double wall um, interstitial monitoring, uh, the double wall piping has to be monitored by an interstitial sensor. That sensor has to be installed near the bottom of the sump. You can see here, this sensor right here is submerged in liquid. It should be going to alarm. This one was actually not working. And you'll see this piece of metal at the top. Sometimes you'll go to sites where they have these and the contractor will just raise them above the level of water to keep them from going into alarm. So be aware that if you see that, that's not the way it's supposed to look. They have to be at the lowest point in your sump. This is what a double wall pipe looks like. When we talk about double wall pipe, there's your primary inner pipe, there's your secondary outer pipe, and then there's the interstitial space between the primary and secondary. That interstitial space is supposed to be there so that any liquids that escape from the inner pipe will go into the interstitial space and hopefully go to one end or the other and set off your sensors that are in those uh, containment sumps. Now here's some pictures of under dispenser containment sumps. These are under your dispensers right here. And they are there so that if there's any leaks in the dispensers or the piping under the dispensers, they will catch those leaks. The leak will get to the um, sensor under there and it'll activate that sensor, either cause an alarm to go off or automatically shut down the site. Your sump sensors, normally the bottom of your under dispenser containment area or your sub turbine pump area. And here's just another picture of the two areas where these sump sensors are located. And they, they're supposed to be at the lowest point in there so that they go into alarm immediately if there's any kind of liquids enter that sump. And these are what they usually look like. They're usually long gray cylinders and, and they go to the bottom of the sump, the sump. If they fall over, they'll go into alarm and it'll, it'll activate um, any uh, shut down protocols that are programmed on that site. Uh, there are smaller versions of these that just are floats. So um, one of the mistakes I made at one time was pulling up one of these sump sensors and turning it upside down and I shut down the whole site. So I would advise against doing that on purpose. Your lead detection equipment has to be um, 
checked every year by a UST contractor. You have to keep all these records in place. And you have to remember no record means no test was performed. And this is just an example of a site where they did not have the sump sensors programmed to shut down the site when they got wet. They did not have an emergency shutoff that worked. So it was just a huge disaster. Um, we don't want this to ever happen on our sites. So one, we want to make sure our emergency shutoff switches work properly. Two, we want to make sure if we have under dispenser containment sump sensors, that those will shut off the flow to fuel if they ever get contacted by fuel. That would have saved this employee a lot of aggravation. Uh, our sites are monitored by Vita Roots. Vita Roots are just a brand of automatic tank gauge. We upgraded all our sites in 2015 so that they have these Vita Root 450 pluses, except for California. And these are all remotely monitored by Vita Root for any alarms or complaints. This is your fuel system checklist. And then we'll talk about the three binders record system. Um, you have different tabs for different areas. There are things that we're going to really focus on for the binders is this binder two area. We want to make sure you keep these release detection results for your lines under the 30 day release detection result area. Your walkthrough inspection checklist. I'll walk you through that in just a second to show you what we're concerned about there. And then you have, of course, your three year testing, your annual testing, and those things should be kept in that binder. Here's your monthly or 30 day checklist. And here you want to make sure that your feeder or ATG doesn't have any alarms active. And then the interstitial. We want you to print out the compliance report from Inside 360, put it in binder number two and make sure it satisfies all the requirements to be in compliance. Here's Inside 360, and this is what it looks like when you get into Inside 360. Uh, you'll see the volume of fuel in your tanks, the ullage, that's how much free space is in your tanks or, or space that doesn't have any fuel. If you have any water in your tanks, it'll come up here. The temperature of the fuel in your tanks, and then any alarms that are active. What you're going to click on is this compliance area. You can either click on the compliance area or go down to reports and click compliance. Either way, we'll get you to the same place. You click on this bottom right tab once you get the compliance reports to open. And on my computer, they usually open within nine to about a minute, anywhere from 15 seconds to a minute. So they can take a while sometimes. So you have to be patient and they seem to work best in Chrome. Um, your compliance site details, you want to make sure you're in the right month, the right 30-day window that you're trying to, to document. Um, we're not really going to focus on tanks in this one. I've done tanks before. You guys should be aware of what all that means. Now, this is the lines area. So we're going to talk a little bit about 0.2 gallon power reports, the 0.1 gallon power reports, and the sensor normal reports from your dispensers and your STPs. First, you want to make sure if you have electronic line leak detectors, this is just electronic line leak detectors. This won't show up if you have mechanical line leak detectors or don't have any. If you have ASTs, you may not have line leak detectors at all. Um, all you need is a pass result. For each one of these 0.2 gallon power, these are monthly tests, so you should have a pass for each one of these. For your 0.1 test, these are annual tests. So you can see when the, the test was last done um, and you just need another pass for these. When we get down to the sensor reports, we're going to look at the dispenser sumps first. So if you have dispenser 1 through 12, first off, make sure all your dispensers are showing up in this report. I've gone to I look at a couple of sites and they were missing a dispenser. Uh, if you're missing a dispenser and you try to show this to a regulator, they will write you up for that issue. Um, and what you want to do is make sure each one of these says that it's normal. You need every dispenser to be normal. The same with your uh, sumps, your sump sensors. You want to make sure that these are all normal and that you've got a sensor showing up for each one of your STPs if you have those. So this is what the just the line portion of your testing looks like. 
Um, you would have the tank section up here at the top with all the, the dates on it like you saw in the first report. But this is what you're going to print and put into your binder number two. This is your fuels team. Uh, each of these contact numbers will get you in touch with the people in charge of that area. I'm in charge of environmental compliance. Uh, you can email me. Seems like I'm a lot easier to get hold of with the emails than I am with phone calls. You can call me on Teams. I'm usually in front of my computer, so if you call me on Teams, I usually hear that. If you need anything and you can't get hold of someone else, you can always reach out to me. I'll help you find whoever you need for that area of fuels. If you have any suggestions on other presentations you'd like me to do, or if you have suggestions on other topics that you would like covered in these environmental reports every month, let me know. I'm open to doing different things, and I just want to make sure that everything's easy for you guys out there in the field and that everything works for you. Thanks again. My name is Robert Largent. Reach out to me anytime you need anything. Thanks, guys.